Howdy dorks. It has been a minute with the uh, crazy schedule that we've been on, but we're back for an instant reaction. This time, the regional semifinal round. Um, I'm recording this on Friday night, so if I don't mention a game that was played um, on Saturday, that's why. So just hold on with me here. But some big, big, big results. The first one being San Antonio Brennan. The Bears get it done over Lake Travis. We've talked about it a lot. Can a 2-1-0 team ever take down one of the mega powerhouses in Region 4, which is Austin Westlake or Lake Travis, and they did. The Bears got them tonight. Um, I think it was 34-17, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, but they played an outstanding game. They did it. They finally got over the hump, and guess what? Now they're going to have to go try and do it again. You've got Westlake up next week, so you got the first one done, which is exceptional, um, but no easier road ahead. But congratulations to the Bears on that Tyler Chapel Hill, fear the Reardon beard. They take on Lumberton. Now, Lumberton's a program that has been around since 1966. They've only been uh, played seven different playoff games, um, or they've only made it to the playoffs seven different times in that history. So big shout out to Coach Reyes and what he's done with this squad because this is the second year in a row that they have made it to the playoffs. Um, they've won two game, two playoff games in 2007 and now two playoff games this year because they fall to Jeff Reardon and his Tyler Chapel Hill Bulldogs squad. Lumberton was up 17 to nothing at halftime, and Chapel Hill found a way with the strength of their run game. It was a cold and, and wet, rainy day, so they um, they used a lot of um, their their rushing ability and really got it done. And you're really seeing this is a still a very young team, but a lot of those kids that were on the state semifinalist team last year when they lost to Austin LBJ were freshmen and sophomores at that point. And I think that you're really getting starting to see that that championship, you know, pedigree begin to form there in Chapel Hill. And too, just the experience of knowing what it takes to play in rounds like this. Lumberton's quarterback did go down. Um, so that helped shift the tides a little bit, but Chapel Hill was already on their way to making a pretty emphatic comeback by the time and they were able to get it done now advancing on from there. Um, one that also uh, was a, a huge eye-opening shocker, maybe, to some of you, but dub the Coyotes, send it out, Coach Grant Freeman. Wichita Falls takes down Brownwood. Um, I think it was 41-19. to 19. Truly, truly something special happening there at Wichita Falls. Now, they are a drop down from 5A Division II to 4A Division I, so that has helped a little bit, but this team has been outstanding. They look really good in all three phases of the game. I do start to worry a little bit about Coach Burnett, Coach Sammy Burnett and Brownwood. You know, it's been quite a few years as, as a program as decorated as anyone in Texas high school football. You do know that the pressures going into that job are very, very high. So interested to see how he's able to, to figure that out there at Brownwood. But an outstanding win, and uh, Coach Freeman better send out Dub the Coyote as they move on to the regional finals. Um, big game in the DFW, Anna taking down Salina. We've talked a lot about championship pedigree and what it means at this time of the year, and they proved tonight that it's not everything, that's for sure. Um, Anna was able to take them down. Evan Bullock really is, is looking outstanding. He's leading this high-flying offense, but I think what tonight showed me for the Anna and Salina team is we talk a lot about their offense, but their defense can step it up to the plate when they really need them to. A very, very good win for Anna there. Um, Liberty Hill literally in the last second squeaks out a win over Alamo Heights. It looked like um, the Mules were going to do it. Liberty Hill had a touchdown with about a minute 30 left in the game, I think. Alamo Heights was able to run it all the way back, get it down the field, um, and they had one final shot in the end zone. The Mules quarterback dropped a what looked like an absolute dime um, into the back of the end zone ended up being incomplete with uh, some really good defense there by Liberty Hill and they were able to squeak it out so um, Liberty Hill is on to the regional finals checking my notes here to see what else uh, sock the cardiac kids man they're going to give me high blood pressure squeaking out another one this time over midlothian heritage in overtime sock pulls it out 33 to 27 you remember their win last week over lovejoy that one was a little bit different because sock was up pretty handedly at halftime they put in their backups and lovejoy starts to make the comeback when you take a look at the score you're going oh okay well that one got really close really fast 
part of that was because their starters weren't out, but this time against Midlothian Heritage, they really, really had to get into their run game. They had to grind and pound it out, and they were able to do that, but they survive and the reigning state champs are back in to the regional final next week. And then finally, um, I've been beating the drum for Fort Bend Marshall pretty hard this year. Um, they came out of, of their district and were thinking, okay, this is a team that we're usually not used to seeing be battle-tested at this point. Like, until they get to this point in the playoffs, it was always the first time that we're like, all right, time to figure out how good Fort Bend Marshall is, which sounds crazy. But that's been the case, not this year. They really have been battle-tested this year, and it paid dividends tonight. They took on a very good Montgomery Lake Creek squad. We had talked to their coach last week. He knew he was excited for the game, knew it was going to be a big test. They've got a really good offensive and defensive line, so the battle of the trenches. But this Fort Bend Marshall team, guys, they are fast, like really, really fast. And I know we say that a lot about Fort Bend Marshall, and historically they're, they're in kind of a, a fast – pace tempo that like doing that but James Williams has a defense right now that is so incredibly fast and quick to move to the ball that anyone is going to have a hard time taking down Fort Ben Marshall so 55 to 18 win over Montgomery Lake Creek in in truly emphatic fashion so tons of other games going on but those were kind of the real big highlights that stuck out to me we will have continuing coverage of the Texas high school football playoffs some of the games in West Texas moved to tomorrow due to to rain and the snow that they were having up there so um, we got a whole nother fun day of games tomorrow excited to watch those go down and then we'll be back on Monday to break it all down for you we're almost there regional final round um, enjoy <laughs>